One remar remarkable aspect of the genome is that the many different cell types in our body all share the same genome, yet have incredibly different characteristics. A way that this difference from one cell type to another is encoded is in the epigenome. The epigenome involves changes to DNA in terms of the modifications that exist. 5-methylcytosine is the canonical mark involved in turning genes off, while the more recently discovered mark 5-hydroxymethylcytosine is often associated with genes that might be on. Together, this fingerprint of cytosine, methylcytosine, and hydroxymethylcytosine acts to differentiate one cell type from another and define their identity. Importantly, these patterns can also be quite different in uh, disease states, in aging, or in cancer, making it really important for us to find sensitive and precise ways to detect DNA modifications. And there's really an opportunity here for impact and innovation. Now, one reason why the legacy methods for differentiating different cell types have been limited is that they fail to discriminate between those two key modifications, 5-methyl and 5-hydroxymethylcytosine. And a second reason is that the chemical methods that we've used to differentiate bases in the genome are often destructive. What goes in isn't what comes out from the process, with as much as 99% of the DNA that goes in being destroyed through the process. So the big question that we've been asking in our lab is, is there a way to address this challenge? We saw an immense opportunity to develop a new method, which is direct methylation sequencing, or DMSeq for short. In direct methylation sequencing, we take normal shear gDNA and actually put on special next generation sequencing adapters, which were intentionally engineered to be resistant to our apubec deaminase and thus compatible with our workflow. These adapters then allow us to prime the creation of a copy strand, which is then especially favorable for DNA protection and modification with our new carboxymethyltransferase enzyme. Subsequent deamination with our apobec deaminase then yields only 5-methylcytosine read out as T. PCR amplification then allows us to sequence on any platform. This is a really great question about sequencing methods because there's absolutely a renaissance right now in this field of epigenetic sequencing. There are so many applications in basic biology as well as clinical diagnostics that are inherently limited by the legacy methods, which is bisulfite sequencing. The legacy method, which is bisulfite sequencing, BSSeq, is chemically based and extremely destructive of DNA. And Unlike that, we have developed ACEq in the past and now DMSeq, with the added advantage that it only sequences out 5-methylcytosine at base resolution, unlike both bisulfite and ACEq. In order to make this possible, we had to come up with an enzymatic modification method, and we achieved this by engineering a new DNA carboxymethyltransferase enzyme, which takes on a new substrate, which is carboxysam. This ultimately creates the first method, which is both non-destructive and directly sequences only 5-methylcytosine at base resolution. Our technology is one of the few that aims to solve this problem of DNA degradation, but other excellent methodologies also exist. And our manuscript is sort of one of the first that really attempts to compare some of these methods to one another. And we hope that our manuscript can stimulate some discussion on what methods might be good for exactly what purpose. First, this paper actually describes some bias in this TAPS method, which has become popular in the last couple of years. We're one of the first labs to actually reproduce this method outside um, of the originally inventing labs. And although new research is needed to reproduce our findings, we actually found significant bias associated with this dihydrouracil base, both on our attempts to reproduce the method, as well as in reanalyzing publicly available data from the original inventing group. EMSeq is another enzymatic method that's currently commercially available from NEB, but this doesn't distinguish 5-methylcytosine from 5-hydroxymethylcytosine. And finally, earlier this year, a group in Cambridge invented a five-letter and six-letter sequencing workflows, which may be commercialized soon, but require you to spend half of your sequencing reads on genetic information, which might not always be needed in the same exact workflow. 
we're very proud of how we decided to benchmark DMSeq against by sulfide sequencing the legacy method. Uh, in one experiment, we actually took 10 nanograms of DNA from a glioblastoma tumor and did matched by sulfite and direct methylation sequencing. And we show by the most rigorous spike in controls that we achieved over 99% fidelity for mapping each of the major modified bases here. We also show that DMSeq preserves DNA relative to bisulfite sequencing by both qPCR as well as total DNA yield. Average library size tends to be over 100 base pairs larger, and this has over a six-fold advantage in covering new unique regions by DMSeq relative to bisulfite sequencing. DMSeq is clearly non-destructive. In mapping out this tumor, we also show that DMC correlates remarkably with bisulfite sequencing at base resolution at most genomic regions. But importantly, when we actually overlaid regions that are important for prognosis, we show that DMC actually accurately parses these regions thought to be enriched with 5-hydroxymethylcytosine, actually sequencing out the true 5-methylcytosine signal with our direct technology. So I think what we've demonstrated is that by permuting natural and engineered DNA modifying enzymes, we now have methods that can allow for the precise and non-destructive mapping of either 5-hydroxymethylcytosine through our method ASEQ, or now 5-methylcytosine, the most important epigenetic mark in mammalian genomes through our new DMSeq method. The question we're left with is what future challenges can such enzymatic sequencing approaches solve? I think there are a lot of opportunities that are offered by such methods. One, I think this is a step closer to resolving single cell complete epigenomes. Given the non-destructive nature of the method, we may be closer to understanding what changes one cell and makes it different from another cell type. Secondly, by mixing and matching different enzymatic methods, we can start to resolve the term code, both cytosine, methylcytosine, and hydroxymethylcytosine, and how these together in cis and in single alleles govern gene expression. The fact that we can use enzymatic methods on small amounts of input DNA really opens up opportunities to study cell types that have been very difficult to characterize in the past because they're very rare, or opens up opportunities for studying cell-free DNA, where very small amounts of DNA can give insight into disease that might be deep in the body. And lastly, I think it's important to recognize that although we use next generation and sequencing approaches, the fact that we're adding DNA modifications and changing the nature of the bases means that these methods are potentially complementary to third generation sequencing platforms like PacBio and Nanopore, given the distinctive nature of these marks will change the way that they can be read out by those modalities.